Hi, we're back today with a very common issue. Um, one of the things we see in the shop quite a bit is machines that unfortunately have had a liquid incident. That means liquid has been spilled on the machine at some point. Oftentimes, the customer bringing the machine in doesn't even realize that it's been spilled on. But you might be finding that your keyboard at home has gotten a little sticky. Maybe when you press on it, it goes crunch, crunch, crunch. That could be a good sign that liquid might have been spilled on the keyboard. And um, this video is going to show you how to A, check for that liquid damage, and B, to replace the keyboard if it's actually damaged. One way that we like to look at the keyboards first, um, let's say I was feeling crunchiness. With, right now I'm actually not. This keyboard, as far as I know, hasn't been spilled on, but I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove a key. Let me get you a little bit of a closer view here. You can see how we remove a key. So I have my nylon probe tool, also called a black stick, and I'm going to put it underneath the keycap and kind of pop the key off that way. Now this key came off very quickly. You'll notice that underneath there is a scissor mechanism, and I kind of grabbed it on the right side of the scissor mechanism to pop the key off. The thing you want to be careful about is that there are little tabs on the bottom of the key that you don't want to damage in that process. Now if this key did have liquid underneath it, I would probably see some signs of it around the edges. Um, I would either see dried residue or maybe actual stickiness. I didn't see anything. To get the key back on, I pop it back on. But you can try that yourself with some other keys. Again, you want to be a little ginger when you do it because if you do accidentally break the plastic, either on the scissors or on the back of the key, um, you are going to need a whole new key or a new pair of scissors in order to fix that. So, I don't see any signs of liquid damage yet. Let's go ahead and get into this so I can show you how to replace the keyboard. So, the machine that I'm using right now is a MacBook Pro, and all of the different models of both MacBook Pro and PowerBooks, um, the keyboards come off in very similar ways, but there are going to be some differences. So, for the MacBook Pro, you pop the battery out with the two um, releases here. Now, there are two screws in the battery bay that I'm going to take out. And I'm using a double zero Phillips for this. There are three screws on the RAM bay to take out. Once the RAM cover is removed, you'll notice there are two T6 screws. I'm going to remove those. And now there are four more Phillips on the back. These guys are pretty long. See, they're pretty long there. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to open up the MacBook Pro and tilt it on its side. That's going to give me a little bit of stability. And I'll bring you up here so you can see what I'm doing. There are going to be four screws along the side. Now the process is very similar if this were a PowerBook G4, as long as we're not talking about a 12-inch. Uh, 15 and 17-inch PowerBooks are very similar design to the MacBook Pro. The bottom looks a little different, and there would be three screws on the side as opposed to four, but the procedure is fairly similar. I'm going to remove two screws from the back. And now four more from the side. If this were a power book, the two screws on the back would be the upper two. You'll notice there will be four back there, so it's the top two you'd want to remove. And they are longer than the side screws. Whereas on the MacBook Pro, all these side screws that I'm removing and the rear screws are all the same size. Now the top case removal for a MacBook Pro and a PowerBook does differ. So if you have a PowerBook, you might want to look for another video on how to remove the top case at this point because there are differences, including two additional screws that would be found here. So I basically tilted it up on a MacBook Pro. So I tilt the top case up. It's free on both sides. And now in the front, I'm going to slide a black stick along this edge. There are going to be four clips that I want to release. Um, I'm sorry, actually, I believe five. We're going to have a, a clip 
around here, and then we're going to have some clips over the optical drive. So to release those, I'm going to just slide my black stick under here, and I'm going to feel that there's a little resistance here. I just pull up, and you heard that loud popping sound. That actually is what you want to hear. Those are the latches releasing there. Again, on a power book, this is a very different procedure, so please look that up before trying this on a power book because those pops you would hear would not be those release clips. You might actually be breaking something if you do the, the same procedure on there. So you'll see there are the four clips in here that I released from and the one clip over here. Great. Now the top case is held onto the logic board with this one flex cable and I'm going to peel up the cap tape around it and gently release the cable. Occasionally this is um, a danger area for this repair because if there is some brittleness to either the connector on the logic board or the connector on the bottom of the top case flex cable, uh, you can actually break off pieces of the plastic on either the cable or the board itself. So this is an area where you want to be really ginger when you take that off. So now that it's off, I can go ahead and close my computer and I can set that aside while I work with just the top case.